today I've got a review for you. Not really a review channel, never done one before, but I thought I would do a review of these Shox Open Run Pro Bone Conduction Headphones. I've not been paid to do this review, I was kindly gifted these headphones from Shox, so thank you very much. Formerly known as Aftershocks, Shocks have come out with these headphones January, I think. So I did use the old pair as well. I've got an old pair of the Titanium Shocks bone conduction headphones, and I'm not usually one to upgrade my tech. I will just buy something when the old pair breaks. So it's quite nice to have an upgrade. But I thought I would just take you through a little bit of the basics, what bone conduction headphones are about, how you use them, just setting them up in general, and then the specs just specs that you can get online, product information, really won't spend much time on that because it's just a list of information that you can get online and then get into the juicy part. So the good things about the headphones, what I really loved about using them and what I think is better than the old pair that I already have and then a couple of things that I didn't enjoy about using them. Let's get into it. So the basics. Bone conduction headphones are what they say on the tin. They don't go in your ear. They play music through conducting the sound waves through your bones. I'm really not an expert on the technology, so I'm just going to leave it there. But essentially, it means that you can have music on or a podcast playing and be able to hear your surroundings as well. Super easy to use, straight out the box. You turn them on, hold down the plus volume button which turns them on and if you continue to hold that button down it puts them into pairing mode so if you wear them whilst you're doing that as you hold down the plus button they'll come on and it will say welcome to shocks keep holding that button down and the little voice that you have on your ears will say pairing so if you want to use them with your phone then it's pretty intuitive you just go into your settings and connect how you would with any other pair of Bluetooth headphones. And you're off. I've got the Garmin 245 Music, so I like using them with my watch because it means I don't have to take my phone with me on a run. It can be sort of as free as it gets with a watch and these headphones. So put them into pairing mode, same as before. And then you just go into the watch settings, into headphones, it'll come up open run pro click connect they pair and you're off these are my third pair of bone conduction headphones previous to this pair i had two pairs of the exact same model which was the titanium by shocks formerly aftershocks it's kind of a new experience to be testing out some newer spec higher spec um tech and I was pleasantly surprised with how different they were and how much better they were than my old pair. All right, very quickly, we're gonna do specs. I don't see a huge amount of value in spending loads of time on this because this is information that you can just get online and I'd much rather spend time talking about the user experience because that's what you wanna know. So. In terms of specs for the Open Run Pro, this is from the shocks.com website. They are £159.95, which is pretty pricey. Um, they come in black, blue, beige, and pink. Um, they've got a quick charge feature. Okay. In terms of what I really like about these headphones, the sound quality is amazing. Far, far better than the titanium version that I was using before. And honestly, as good as some in-ear headphones that I've used. So, because often what you get with bone conduction headphones or headphones that don't go in the ear is that the sound quality is nowhere near as good. You obviously get the benefit of the fact that you can hear your surroundings, which is obviously a lot safer. You can hear cars coming, hear bikes approaching from behind you. Um, but sometimes the sound quality is compromised. Absolutely not the case with the Open Run Pro. I was pretty blown away by the difference in sound quality when I put them on. So 10 out of 10 on sound. 
The second best thing about these headphones, the battery life is so much better. And the great thing about these, but with also other Shox headphones is that they tell you the battery life when you turn them on and when you press the volume buttons when it's not playing any music. So you can find out as soon as you put them on whether you've got low battery. And the great thing with these ones is if you have low battery and you're about to leave for a run, you can put them on charge for five minutes and you get an hour and a half battery time, which is pretty unrivaled. I don't know any device that charges that quick. And the battery life in general is just far improved. I haven't had to charge these anywhere near as many times as I did with my old pair. So battery life, thumbs up. And lastly, if I'm keeping this to a list of three things that I really liked about these headphones, I'm just gonna bundle loads of things into one and say that the design is really good. They're a lot lighter than my old pair, less bulky, a lot more sleek. So these bits that go on your ear um, are just smoother, smaller, and a lot more comfortable. They're lighter. The charging port isn't covered up. So on the old pair that I've got, there's a little um, flippy sort of cover that you have to pull off for the charging port and it feels quite flimsy and like it might break. This charger port isn't covered up at all and the charger port itself is magnetic so once you connect it it's just going to stay on charge even if you accidentally pull it or it's just going to stay put which is good. They are blue and they match my t-shirt and yeah they're just a lot more comfortable to wear. They don't move around as much when you're running than the old pair. So just in general, really, the improvements to the design overall are really good. So, in terms of the things that I didn't like about the headphones, the examples that I'll use are both kind of scenarios where I wouldn't actually use these headphones, but I did. So the first one is using them in the gym. It's not great. You don't want to be using these headphones when you don't want to be able to hear your surroundings. So I did a treadmill run with these on and I really had to have the volume up to the max to be able to hear and enjoy the music. And I could also hear the sound of my feet thumping on the treadmill belt and those around me. So not ideal for using in the gym, but I would usually just take my AirPods with me to the gym, which is a little bit annoying because they get a lot more sweaty and they sort of slip around a bit, but not the ideal headphones to use at the gym. Similarly, if you are running and you come along a section of quite a busy road, the same thing kind of happens. It's not as bad, but you can just hear the cars rushing past and it kind of overpowers the music sometimes. I'm talking about like an A road or a motorway. In that scenario, you can't hear the music as well because the noise around you sort of overpowers it. So those would be my only gripes, but I tend to stay away from busy roads. And if I have a run that is exclusively along a busy road, then I guess I just won't wear these. Similarly, if you are using these sort of not for their design function, I'd say, and taking calls on them, um, I occasionally have a call with my mum or a friend while I'm on a run. And if I know that I'm going to be doing that, again, I will wear my AirPods and obviously I'll have my phone with me because the noise cancellation on the AirPods is really good. So it's going to be less annoying for the person on the other end of the phone. They're not going to be able to hear the wind and cars rushing past me. But if you wear these and it's windy, the person that you are on the phone to is not going to want to speak to you for very long. If you're running along, if you're cycling, they're not great for phone calls if you are moving at speed or that there's a lot of noise around you. I have worn them around the house so that I can hear if the doorbell goes and I've been doing some cleaning or what have you. Um, and in that scenario, speaking to someone on the phone on them is absolutely fine. So it's just that there's noise around you, not great for phone calls. And that's really it. I have no gripes with the design, the sort of shape and the functionality of them. My only sort of annoyance is in scenarios where I probably wouldn't usually use these headphones. So that in a nutshell is the review of these Love Eel headphones. I'd say if you want sound quality and you've got the money to spend because they are 160 quid, get these headphones, go for it. You won't regret it. If you enjoy running with music and hearing your surroundings, do it. If you want to save a little bit of money or you don't have as much to spend or you're not fussed about the audio quality being perfect, then go for a lower model. These are the Open Run Pros. The Open Runs are, I don't know how much they are, I'll put that here as well the open runs 
the version that are not the pros, so just the open runs are cheaper, or you can get the old models that they don't sell anymore, or you can get on eBay secondhand. The bone conduction headphones, I think, just are great in general. If you do want that slightly better audio quality, then these are the ones you're gonna want to go for. Hope you enjoyed this slightly different video. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe, come back next time for some more running content, and yeah, that's all I have to say, really.